Having the skill doesn't guarantee that you're going to win, but not having the skill or not having actually assessed where you're at with the skill level definitely guarantees you're going to lose. This is the business of architecture. Hello and welcome back, Architect Nation. I'm Enix Sears, and joining me today is Ryan Willard. For those of you who are joining us for the first time, this is the show where you'll discover tips, strategies, and secrets for building, managing, running an architectural practice that allows you to do your best work more often. And now a word from our sponsor, RCAT. The Big Red A is coming to San Francisco. If you're going to the AIA 23 conference, go stop by RCAT at booth 835. RCAT saves you time and money with over 10,500 manufacturer listings by Alpha or CSI section, 7,000 free BIM models, 900 specs, and much more like Spec Wizard, the patented tool that allows you to configure and generate a full three-part specification in minutes. If you're a manufacturer of fine building products, also please stop by RCAT and see how they can get you in front of AEC professionals searching for the right solutions for their projects. Go ahead on over to the Big Red A at booth 835 at the AIA conference. I'll see you there. And if you haven't already gotten access to our 60-minute firm owner masterclass, then we invite you to do that. Head on over to smartpracticemethod.com. You'll get free instant access to that after you enter your email address, or you can attend one of the webinars that I run on the Smart Practice Method. So we want you to stop being on the hamster wheel and start living the life that you deserve to live with the firm that you deserve to have. And today we're here to talk about a question that we get very often, which is, what's the right project management software for my architectural practice? What is the software I should use? There's so many options and I'm confused. How do I find the right project management software? Now, first of all, let's set up the problem, Ryan. What, what are the problems that firm owners are experiencing probably that we see that cause them to want to look to this as a solution? What are some of the problems? I'll list one, um, which is being oversubscribed, right? Having too much to do, not enough time to do it, so deadlines are slipping. Yes. What are some of the other problems that we see? So I would say in general, there were, there's normally some kind of inefficiency in the projects and there's either a completely not knowing how much profit projects are making, which is reflected in a lack of resource, kind of cash flow inefficiencies, feast or famine cycles, um, money always seeming quite quite tight. Um, I think a lot of practice owners, they develop a sense of which projects are profitable and which ones are not, but it's a sense. It's a gut yeah. feel. There isn't any kind of data to back it up. And it's more to do with the experience of that project was horrific. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't tell you exactly me anything measurable about why it was horrific, but it didn't feel good in the practice. And there's a, you know, there's low morale on the team with that particular project. Um, and, you know, the, the worst thing is, is that there isn't anything, there isn't anything objective and anything analytical um, to be able to, number one, take yourself out of that, you know, kind of awful experience of a certain project to be able to avoid it happening again or being able to see the warning signs earlier. So we get into this kind of the problems, one of the problems would be, would be that this is a repeated issue. It's something that's been, it's either persistent or it's become chronic. Absolutely. Not not to mention the the unsettled feeling, the lack of certainty we have about what's going to happen tomorrow, what's going to happen a couple months from now. I know that, you know, running an architectural practice is hard enough as it is, and oftentimes it's compounded by this underlying sense of uncertainty about what's going to happen a month from now, two months from now, three months from now. So I know a lot of times our clients come to us, they're wanting to alleviate this feeling, this uneasy feeling that's sort of like always there in the background never knowing this is where like we have fears about recession. So it's this ability to forecast, this ability to know, should we hire someone? When's the right time to hire someone? How much work do we have? How much work should we be doing? Right? All of these questions are things and all these problems and issues are things that cause architects to be on the hunt for the right project management solution in terms of a yeah. software, especially. I mean, nowadays with cloud-based software and apps on your phone, there's so many options to be able to get the data that you need to drive your practice successfully. The, um, However, waste, I was going to say, I was going to add, add yeah. to that list. Um, you know, just the experience of wasted time, you know, the oh, experience yes. of, 
of like, hold on a minute, why are we doing this again? Or, or I sent a team member to do something and it should have taken them five hours and they've been working on it two weeks and I haven't checked in with them and now they've sent me what they've actually done and I've got to spend time redlining it. And, you know, Ouch. we've gone back and forth. I hate it when that happens. That's like two weeks. That shouldn't have, that shouldn't have happened. So there's this experience of just churn and, and wasting time and inefficiency. That's what Which I got to really call my wife really and say, hey, honey, that vacation we're scheduled to go on this evening, I'm going to be late. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> I just discovered something at the office. It's going to take more of my time. <laughs> yes. So there's a number of project management softwares out there. There's a lot. There's too many to list. So if you're a software uh, producer and you don't make it on the list, please, ahead of time, we apologize. Uh, there, we don't have enough time to cover everything. But what we're going to be going over will be valuable for those of you listening. So... Generally, uh, some of the most commonly used project management softwares for architects are the following. Now, we want to make a distinction here between financial management software, office management software, and project management software. Okay, So oftentimes, I know architects use these terms interchangeably, but there is a distinction between office management software, project management software, and financial management software. Okay, so office management software would be something. Well, let's let's start with financial management software. Financial management software is something that manages typically the finances of the office. It might have tools for managing the cash flow. It might have tools for managing the KPIs. It typically will have the ability to send out invoices. It has the ability to categorize your transactions for tax purposes. So this is generally what we might call an accounting software. Okay. Things like Xero or QuickBooks fall into this category for sure. These are like financial management software, although calling them financial management might be a bit of an overstatement. They're more like bookkeeping software. Yeah. Okay. Now, in addition to that, we have project management software. Project management software oftentimes don't necessarily have financial data included in them. Uh, but they're specifically dealing with timelines and dealing with allocation of how many staff hours you have. So you say, okay, we have this many staff hours and we have this type of expertise. How do we then map our project load onto our team to be able to get everything done sequentially at the right time with the right milestones and just manage that whole workflow process? So that's project management software. Now, office management software combines both of those. So office management software is something where it has an accounting function where you're going to have your chart of accounts in there, where you're going to have, you're going to be able to pull off specific key financial indicators that tell you how your firm's performing. Uh, you're going to be able to pull out potentially tax reports or link it up to something like QuickBooks so then you can do your tax on that platform. Okay. And in addition, it's also going to have the ability to do the project management as well. Okay. So there's, there's a number of ways to deal with this. Um, some of the the old the, the some of the you know some of the softwares that have been around for a long time Dell Tech Vision is one uh, that a lot of larger firms use because it's been around for a long time. Uh, it has a reputation for being difficult to set up and not so agile, and oftentimes you have someone at the firm who's just dedicated on using this particular software because architects don't like using it. Right now, in addition to Dell Tech Vision, there's a Jira which was purchased by. Dell Tech, so they now own Ajira, and Ajira is a popular one. It's actually very, very powerful. It has both a project management solution as well as a financial management solution. We know a lot of successful practices that use Ajira, and it's a fantastically powerful software. However, it might not have the user interface that you find to be the most pleasing. Uh, it's a little bit dated. It doesn't have a cloud-based accounting function. Well, it's it's not necessarily it doesn't have the cloud and like mobile basis that a lot of the web apps have nowadays. So that that could be a minus. Okay. So we're going to list off a couple of them. A Jira would be an office management software because it has it an accounting. Have a, few, a few workarounds that are needed when using a Mac as well. <laughs> yeah. If you use a Mac, you're, <laughs> it could be difficult. True. Now, a couple of the other uh, more popular s softwares, which if you're researching software, you've run across these, uh, of course, would be Core by BQE. So BQE is Bill Quick. They started out doing engineering software a long, long time ago. And then they acquired ArchiOffice back in the early 90s or late 90s, I believe, early 2000s. And uh, since then on that platform, they've redesigned the whole platform. And now they have a very solid offering, which is BQE Core. Uh, they've sponsored our podcast here. We're friends with the people over at BQE. And theirs is definitely considered an office management software, meaning that it has an accounting function as well as a project, has an office accounting function, a project accounting function, as well as um, 
a project management function. Okay, there's something like Monograph, which is a bit of a newer platform, but uh, the guys and ladies over at Monograph, they're very, uh, how to say, it? they're very responsive to their client base. They have a beautiful user interface. It's cloud-based as well, and that would also be, uh, we, we could consider that uh, an office management software, although I know some of their uh, their financial accounting functions aren't as strong. And then we have we have Factor, we have Squava, and we have something called Fresh Projects. So those are sort of AE specific. On the non AE specific side, we have something called Big Time, which I know a couple of our clients use that software. Um, Monday.com, Reich, yep. and Asana are some of the big ones. Now, Maven Link some- is another one. Go ahead, Ryan. What else do you have? Maven Link is another one. That's yeah, Maven normally... Link. I know. Yeah, we know a couple of our clients use Maven Link for sure, right? So that would large, be more large of Large practices a... typically that will use that one. Yeah, yeah. And I would include Maven Link. I would include that as a project management software that has a project um, financing function, but it doesn't have an office office financing function. I don't believe it has like a chart of accounts and accounting function or anything like that. Mm-hmm. So if we haven't completely confused you by now, well then you're ahead of the pack, right? So as you can see, this is why this is such a question the architects are industries because there's so many options here. What Ryan and I will say after our decade plus of experience is that you can have any one of these systems can work for you. We have seen enormously successful practices using every single one of these systems that we've just talked about. So the key here, what, I, what we'd like you to consider today is that the key here isn't so much the actual tool that you're using, but it's something else. And Ryan, in our experience, what is that something else? Drum roll. What is it? It's it's going to be the discipline and awareness of actually using the tools and, and, and doing the reporting. Yeah, yeah. Here's the thing. If you're having trouble using spreadsheets right now, you're going to have trouble using any sort of project management or financial management software in your practice. Okay. So this is often where we see the gap is. So whereas most most architects are saying, you know what, the project management solution is going to be my my savior. That's going to be what I need. That's going to solve my problems. Actually, it's not. Now, we may get some flack for this, but we've seen this again and again and again, that it's the tool is important, like the tool has to work. And all the tools we just listed, all of them will work. They all have very smart project. They always they have smart programmers behind them. They have smart product development teams. They have smart teams that are leading. The, these are smart people that have come up with these products. They work. They work in different ways. Some of them don't do some things that you might want. But here's the thing. Oftentimes, more often than not, Ryan, what we find is architects, we have this need to want to have everything be completely customized, and we're going to do it different than the way everyone else does it. Yep. Right. I want to issue my invoices to have like, you know, 12 point font and I need to have the ability to just smidge them over just three pixels up and then two pixels down. And then I have the ability to charge in this really obscure way because that's the way we've been doing it for 10 years, which just makes it more difficult to actually find a project management or financial management solution that works. So our recommendation is focus on developing the skills of project management and let that be number one and let number two be the tool, right? So even if you have to start out with spreadsheets, start out with something and just master, even if it's post-it notes, right? Even if it's just post-it notes. Like I remember one one t- one, one architectural practice, uh, their project management system was basically a wire on the wall to which they they would hang index cards with these little alligator clips, And it would just be like, it would be like sort of like a full-size Kanban board. So a Kanban board is basically, it's like a whiteboard divided up into horizontal sections. And then they go by phase. So it might be pre-design. It might be schematic design. It might be design development. It might be construction document, whatever. And then what you do is you just take those post-its and you move it from left to right as it progresses through the phases. That's like project management simplified. So something like that could be, it could be that simple. But what Ryan's saying here is that the linchpin, the key to actually solving the issues that we talked about at the beginning of this podcast are not going to be in the software. It's like you can have the best samurai sword in the world, but if you don't know how to use it, you're going to end up cutting off your foot. Right? I remember um, one of my buddies, I'll never forget, he taught me this lesson. We were, uh, I went to Cornell University and one of my buddies, Jonathan de Guzman, he was really, he was uh, from Switzerland. 
grew up in Switzerland. His father worked for the United Nations. Great guy. But anyways, he was he he was a great he was a great um, skater, right? Because they do apparently in Switzerland they do a lot of ice hockey. <laughs> so he was he was a great skater, and so that translated into rollerblading. One time we were talking about like rollerblading and skates and gear and stuff like that, and he sort of made this remark about like, you know, kind of he had a pet peeve of people that showed up, you know, with like the the best gear. They showed up with, like these thousand dollar rollerblades like when their skill level was just absolute crap, you know? And his, his, his opinion was that like, you know, start out with like a lower end or a used piece of equipment, work your way up. And then your gear is a reflection of the skill level you have within that gear, right? Because you're going to be able to fully utilize the difference of that advanced technology. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's an unpopular answer. But the answer that we have, and we'll probably we'll probably get some hate mail for this, but the answer is you suck at project management. That's the real problem. Let's get straight here. <laughs> it's it's interesting, you know, the, the the discipline and we've worked with businesses who, you know, who have had high revenue, gross sales in the in the millions, and they've operated off relatively simple set of spreadsheets. And they, yeah. but they've had really amazing disciplines and routines and structures and communication and leadership to ensure that those tools are working to their absolute maximum. Absolutely. And, yeah. And, and they've been, and they've been refined. And I think that's very, it's very, very impressive. And also, you know, what we'll often see is that with any project management software, there is a learning curve that happens with it. And as you were um, um, indicating earlier that, you know, you can't always do everything exactly the way that you've always done it. And then this causes the next problem, which is like, okay, well, I'm going to abandon this piece of project management software and I'm going to go on to the next one. And so we can have people looking for project management tools for the best part of a year. And yeah, and, the whole and what time. they're ignoring, Ryan, what they're ignoring is they're we're just blind because we were never taught this in school. No one's trained us in business. Is they're blind to the actual root causes of the problems they're experiencing. So they're going out. They're thinking that the problem is okay. So they're experiencing some symptoms. I'm experiencing some symptoms. I'm having things like projects are going over budget. We don't have enough. We don't have enough budget for our projects. We're having difficulty managing the workflow. We're not being able to get to projects as soon as we'd like. We feel like we've taken on too much work. We don't have enough time to get it done. That's causing added stress or it's causing at least to push out when the projects get done. We're operating in a sense of constant overwhelm, feeling like there's so many things to do and not enough time to do it. And so we look at this and we, you know, we're just so desperate for an answer. We think I I need to get better at my, my, I just need a better project management tool. You know, I need something to be able to organize the chaos. When the root problem, when we look at like really what we mean by project management, it's actually, there's a lot that goes into it. There's a lot of things that could be the causes of these kind of symptoms. So when you think about managing any project, there's so much that goes into it. There's communication, right? There's being able to communicate clearly what's needed, what's expected in the right time frame. There's accountability, internal accountability for team members. There's responsibility for team members taking ownership over deadlines and being able to do what it takes to get things done on time. There's an office cultural aspect of hiring the right people, making sure we have the right people so that they can work unsupervised without having to pepper us with questions, right? There's so many small things that could be causing these symptoms and faulty project management software is definitely not in the top 20. (laughs) I'm reminded of a, of a story of a, a mentor once said to me that, and it kind of same. We were talking specifically about time management, and and it's the same for project management as well. Let's let's consider mm. project management being a more um, evolved aspect of time management. And he said that it's neither of them is project or time management. That's that's not the problem. The problem always lies in self-leadership and when there's self-leadership is wavering or un and messy and particularly when there's when we talk about self-leadership we're talking about governance of your own internal domain 
and the beliefs and the thoughts and the ideas and the internal chaos because it's that becomes very difficult like if that's all sort of all, all over the place these are the sorts of things that you know we're unable to manage our own time and keep deadlines then it becomes very difficult much harder to manage projects and other people and lead other people and enroll other people into into ideas that are going to need a discipline and routine so we're talking here about there's the tool and the infrastructure which is the project management tool great useful excellent we need good tools then surrounding the tool or the infrastructure is a routine or a discipline that we need to develop and embed or a habit if you like but in order to be able to successfully embed a habit a routine particularly amongst a group of other people then there needs to be the right context the right paradigm a set of beliefs uh, and in a, a kind of a vision a culture that that lifts and ensures that the embedding of this habit happens and stays embedded mm-hmm. and that's that's some that's often the thing that's that's missing and it's often the it's often the hidden beliefs or paradigms or the unexamined beliefs and paradigms which are the most disruptive to the establishing of a good routine habit and then you know the executing and use of a good tool or piece of infrastructure so our invitation to you today is if you're on the project management merry-go-round meaning if you're in that position of maybe you've started with one system it's not working so you want to go to the next system and the next system then take a look and do the inventory first of all figure out if you get very clear about what are the symptoms that i'm trying to overcome here by getting a new project management software and then take a look at okay what are the what are the internal soft skills or the things about me or my my office or my my skill set or my team members that are exacerbating this problem and what we'll generally find if you do a, a sincere and honest evaluation and analysis is that that's where the root causes lie. So the short answer is pick a system. Any one of the ones we mentioned are great. They're going to work for you. Just pick one and go with it. It's sort of like you can spend a whole lot of time trying to vacillate between like which system to buy, right? When that's not really the biggest question. Powerful people make decisions quickly when they have the available information. They move into it, they go with it, and they move ahead. So, Ryan, what is the right project management software for architects? (laughs) The disciplined one. Yes, yes. It's more like, what is the right architect's for project management software that's probably the better question Mm -hmm. yeah exactly who's the right who's the right architect yeah yeah here's the thing having these skills like if we take it back to a skill level having the skill doesn't guarantee that you're going to win but not having the skill or not having actually assessed where you're at with the skill level definitely guarantees you're going to lose now uh, a few, just again, if you go to the, pro- the, the, the the notes of this particular episode, we'll list out the different software solutions we've talked about. Ajira, BQE Core, Monograph, Factor, Squava, Fresh Projects, and then on the non-AEC specific side, BigTime, Monday.com, Reich, and Asana for the more project management. I'm sure there are others out there. Uh, those are a few to look into. And, and if you'd like... Yeah, yeah, hair, t- hair table, definitely. Now, if you'd like to, uh, we've prepared a special resource that you can get access to. We've we've uh, had our clients provide us with their their honest feedback about these various systems, the ones that they are using, both the pluses and the cons, and we've compiled that into a little downloadable PDF. So if you'd like to get access to that to get some inside view on some of these software solutions, then go to businessofarchitecture.com forward slash PM for project management businessofarchitecture.com forward slash PM and you'll be able to get access to and download that little resource. Ryan, anything else we want to share with our audience here in our, our closing of this episode today? I'm, I'm often reminded of the dictum that my mother used to tell me 
about making a decision and if I was ever struggling to make a decision around, you know, what thing to have or what thing to do next, um, which is, it's not about making the right decision, but about making the decision right. What does and, that mean? And it, and it means that like, like what you were saying in terms of like a leader makes mm. decisions quickly and, mm. you know, then you make it the right decision. You have the ability to, to be committed to the decision and to ensure that it's the right one. Even if the circumstances play out in a way that you weren't expecting or didn't want, yep. you're committed to it being uh, the right decision at the time. Yeah, yeah. Choose chocolate or, chocolate or vanilla, right? Exactly. Just exactly. make a decision. There's there's a there's a, 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 a freedom a freedom around that. What I what I will say as well with the project management is that you know for people to just be aware of that model of you know the tools and the infrastructure, the habits and the routines that are needed to to get it to work, and the paradigm and the context, the internal um, self leadership that's needed to establish a powerful habit to use to use the tool. Absolutely. And, and yeah. We want to be we want to be looking there. And sometimes when people get involved with a new piece of software, they'll put all of the the um, they'll they'll put all of the benefit into the software, and not necessarily realize that actually they got really excited about the software, and something changed, a belief changed, and they started to believe that it was going to be easy, and then they got excited and the excitement helped carry and establish a discipline. Okay. So there is sometimes, you know, the software, if a software is, is easy and enjoyable to use, it makes it easier to set up these rhythms and, and disciplines for sure. Yeah. Well said. Well, there you have it. Thank you for joining us on this episode of the business of architecture podcast, as always bringing you timely and relevant information for structuring your practice so that you can do more of the kind of architecture that you want to do so you can build a practice to suit your life instead of feeling like your practice is running your life. Ryan, it's been a pleasure today. Thank you, Enoch. All right. Bye, bye for now. And that's a wrap. And now a word from our sponsor, RCAT. The Big Red A is coming to San Francisco. If you're going to the AIA 23 conference, go stop by RCAT at booth 835. RCAT saves you time and money with over 10,500 manufacturer listings by Alpha or CSI section, 7,000 free BIM models, 900 specs, and much more like Spec Wizard, the patented tool that allows you to configure and generate a full three-part specification in minutes. If you're a manufacturer of fine building products, also please stop by RCAT and see how they can get you in front of AEC professionals searching for the right solutions for their projects. Go ahead on over to the Big Red A at booth 835 at the AIA conference. I'll see you there. The views expressed on the show by my guests do not represent those of the host, and I make no representation, promise, guarantee, pledge, warranty, contract, bond, or commitment, except to help you conquer the world. Carpe diem.